Speedrun is a game by Verse that we all enjoy. But what if you want to make your own version? In this video, I will show you how to do just that in a quick and simple tutorial. Alright, well let's get started. So as you can see right here, I have a base plate. Uh, not much good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Uh, I'm just going to make this smaller a bit. Maybe right here, you can size your own levels. But uh, this is what I'm going to have for now. So this is my base plate. This is where the players will start playing. So uh, now I'm going to create a part that's going to be on top of it. And this is where I want the users to spawn onto. So let's make that zero, we'll make this bright yellow, and this will be how we know that we have got to a uh, new level. All right, let's make the top surface smooth. Okay, smooth, smooth, all the way through. And all right, that is it. Now we are going to put this in a model, and we're going to name this, um, we'll just name it Spawns right now. So this is Spawn 1. So let's create a little example course here. Uh, let's just rename this to part so we don't get confused. Give it a little styling. Hardichoke color. <laughs> Smooth, smooth. All right, so this is anchored, so we are safe to duplicate and move that. We'll, uh, we'll just make something like this for now. Okay, so as you can see, I have something very simple. This will be the second stage. Um, and this spawn, let's put it in the spawns group and delete this one because when we script, we do not want there to be uh, more than one spawn. Turn on filtering enabled, always. Let's add a script to our workspace. Let's name this core. And down here, we'll go game.players. Let me zoom in a little. Game.players.playerAdded, connect, and we'll do p added. I'll make that up here a local function, p added and player. So now basically what this does is this, uh, every time a player joins the game, it will send them up to this function and this function will run. So what we need in a speedrun game, uh, we need to have leader stats that show the user how far along they are. So right now let's just create a folder and call it user values. And in here, um, integer value, we'll name that stage. Set the default to one, otherwise the uh, script won't know what to do with it. Now, let's make another folder, name this leader stats. This is very important, it's named leader stats. Put stage inside of leader stats and leave that there. So what we have here is we have replicated storage. What we're going to do is we're going to get this and clone it into the player. So let's do uh, local replicated storage. Golly, I can't type today. Equals game, get service, replicated storage. Local values equals replicated storage to dot user values. So this is referring to this now. So when the player's added, I just like doing this just in case we add more uh, values into user values later that we need to get. So I just do um, for underscore comma v in pairs, and that would be values get children do, 
and then wait because the script will time out if you do not put a wait there. So what this basically does is every time the player connects to the game it runs this function and it will go child by child in user values which right now just has leader stats. So it'll go child by child and we can access that child by using the uh, local variable v because it's four underscore comma v in pairs and we're going one by one to get the children. So uh, v clone dot parent equals player. So now uh, when I start my game up you'll see I have a stage up here and if we go into players you'll see leader stats cloned into my character and stages along with it. So if I change this value it'll change up here. So pretty awesome but not much to do with that. So let's run another function. Player dot character added connect C added. So now we will have another local function C added. So this is every time the character gets added from the player. So every time I die it will run this. Now we don't want to put this in every time the character gets added back to workspace because that would just clone everything um, for each time I died and came back. We just want to do this once. Now for everything we want to do every time you die and come back we put it in this function which is very helpful for spawning to the correct uh, spawn as your stage. So we'll do local player equals game dot players and then this will find the player by the character's name. This is safer than other methods. Uh, I recommend finding the player this way. So now we have the player and local stage equals player dot leader stats dot stage dot value. So now we're getting the stage. This is nice. Um, but it doesn't really do anything so far. So local model, we'll call workspace.spawns. So now this is starting to um, figure into it a little better. So now what we will do is character.humanoid root part dot C frame. Again, this is a safer method than using character move to. Uh, equals model, and then this will find spawn, see we're finding the spawn, and then sub, whoops, and then string dot sub, and then stage. So what we have now is every time we spawn it should teleport us to workspace.spawns dot spawn and then whatever our stage is which should be one real quick you probably caught that all right so I ran some debugging in here and what we're going to do is add this following line repeat wait until player dot leader stats dot stage dot value and this means does not equal does not equal zero and just to make sure it's fail safe we will actually make this spawn one a spawn location just so that the uh, player goes there. When we test obviously we're just going to go to the spawn by default um, and you will see it will work when we go to stage two when we get to that part as well. Speedrun has teleports to different locations so, uh, we're going to move these out a bit, just over there, to somewhere else. And on this part, we're going to put a little thing so they know they reached the end. Let's make this red. 
So drag this into spawns actually and name this end one. So now what we are going to do, add another script and we will name this uh, handle spawning. So we'll get the model again equals workspace dot spawns and then for blank underscore comma v in pairs model good children do wait and uh, v dot touched connect function hit now what this is doing you're also going to want to add if v dot name so we'll do string dot sub v dot name comma one comma three equals equals end then so now what this does is instead of having to put a script into every single one of these end pieces to teleport the player um, this is going to handle all of them at the same time. It's better than having to create a script for every single uh, block. So now, whenever you touch these, we want um, the player's leader stats stage value to go up by one, or uh, to specifically go up by one from this one, to go to two from one. So we'll do... Uh, local new stage equals this is tricky two number and then we're actually getting the string string dot sub v dot name comma four close bracket close parentheses uh, these are actually parentheses so what this is doing is this is getting the fourth character in the name Onward. So if this was end and then a bunch of numbers, then that would take them to uh, level 143. And then it's converting it to a number, so we can do math like it on this. We add plus 1, which means that it takes it to the new stage. So now we'll do local player equals game.players and then hit.parent.name. I also need to add something in here to make sure that uh, whoever hits it is a player. So hit dot parent find first child humanoid. Then each character always has a humanoid attached to them. So this is how you can differentiate whether they're uh, characters or just random bricks. So now we got the player and then player dot leader stats. Remember dot stage dot value because we are changing the value of the stage here and we're going to equal new stage this also um, prevents against hacking so like if they touch it multiple times they don't go up by one each time this uh, takes the name of the brick which is set and just adds one to it so it takes them to the new stage and then the last thing we want to do is hit dot parent dot because hit dot parent is the character right so hit dot parent dot humanoid root part dot c frame equals model and then we're going to find in that model spawn and then add to this string with the two dots a new stage and then dot c frame plus vector three dot new 0, 4, 0. So this is a long, complicated piece of uh, scripting, but basically what this is doing, hit is uh, whatever part touches the brick here, which in this case it's end 1. So uh, like a right leg or left leg or something, it's most likely what's going to be hit. So right leg dot parent is going to have a humanoid if it is a character. And then, so this is taking um, the stage from the part that it hit, which is end one. It's getting that last, uh, the last characters on here starting at the uh, one. It's converting that to a number so we can do math on it. 
add the stage level to it. Then we're finding the players, the player by going to game.players and finding him under hit.parent.name, which would be the character.name. So game.players.aspect, uh, you could find that by going workspace.aspect.name. They have the same name. So that's all we're doing there. And then we're changing the stage value of the player to the new stage, and we are finally teleporting that player. We use humanoid root part because Roblox introduced uh, the R15 characters. So this also works whether you're using upper torso, normal torso, whatever you have, uh, R6, R15. This will set the C-frame, which is basically a fancy word for positioning. It's a little more than that, but all you need to know is it's positioning pretty much. Um, to the model which is workspace dot spawns, remember, to the C-frame, and then we're moving it up four units, which is uh, four studs, so. Okay, so wait, 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 I forgot, I'm sorry. Um, in speedrun, there is a pad, kind of, that uh, makes you go faster, right? So, we're wanting to make this the go pad, so pretty much whenever they step on this, they go faster. So we'll name that go pad. And I guess we'll make another script. This really isn't the uh, most efficient way to do this, but it's fine. Put that in a model named go pads. And go pad script for underscore comma v in pairs workspace dot go pad whoops what was that go pads get children do wait so now we're getting all the children under workspace dot go pads um, so v dot touched connect function hit so if hit dot parent find first child humanoid. So this is checking to see if it is a uh, player character. Then hit.parent.humanoid.walkspeed equals 80. All right. So now whenever we spawn and we touch this, we get 80 walk speed. You see that? So now let's uh, try to beat this level. So cry if you need to A few moments later Move that over, move that over Test again So now, when we touch the brick You see it teleported us to stage 2 Changed our value And now if we die, uh, spawn Automatically all right, so we're looking good. I actually, I wanna make this separate just so that it, uh, we can change this easier. So this whole thing is the go pad. This is different. See, it's a transparent brick, but uh, they will touch it and get their walk speed. The beauty of this method is that it enables you to add new levels extremely quickly. So for example, if we go over here and let's just uh, put a few bricks out here. I'm gonna put a go pad over here. Let's make that a little smaller. Just make sure they get their walk speed here again. We'll copy spawn to, put it at the end, name it into after making it red. So now we have a whole new level and the easy way to make another one, you just duplicate, put over here and name this spawn three because this is now the third level and all of these bricks, uh, we'll just make them rock and basically you can just keep going uh, but I'll stop right there. after we make another go pad. Remember it's very important to put these on each level 
Uh, they're transparent, so it doesn't really matter where they go. Make sure they are can collide false, though. So an important part of this, apparently, is to uh, test your levels before you make them. So here we go. We're on stage two. And now when we touch this brick here, uh, we should be teleported over there. Yep. So let's die just to test to see if it teleports us automatically back to stage three. And it does. And you'll notice that we have slow walk speed right now, but that's because we haven't touched the go pad yet. So once we touch the go pad, boom, fast. And uh, you can add a winner's level over here or something, whatever you want to do. But basically that's the gist of it. Uh, you're well on your way to making your own speed run game. I really like this method, uh, these scripts, because it's easy, so easy to add new levels and it automatically accounts in for anything. So if this tutorial has helped you, then uh, leave a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel to be the first to know about new scripting tutorials, uh, development tutorials. If you need to know how to become a beginner scripter to understand some of the things that I said in this video, I have two tutorials. I'll leave a link to them in the description. Feel free to check those out. They're just 36 Robux, 25 Robux. They're not walking tutorials. They are fully interactive with quizzes. Um, I know of a lot of people who have benefited off of them. So, uh, yeah, have a good one. Daisy 8. Guess it's the way that we do now. You, me, we never say sorry. Hands around my